Welcome to a meeting. We got your esports and gaming hot topics, hot tweets, and the spiciest memes. Hi, Lisa. Hi. Uh, if you're not sure how this works, let's break it down for you. We're going to present you all the goodies that we've gathered, which we will discuss and likely argue. But lucky for all of us, there's a mute button right here, which we can each press once to shut the other up. That's right. So we love it when you call us out when we're wrong and praise us when we're spitting truth. So let's get right to it. All right, so let's get right into the first story of the day as the Overwatch League finally confirmed a long-standing rumor. Overwatch director Jeff Kaplan announced that both the game and the league will be getting a roll lock system. That means that every match has to feature two DPS, two tanks, and two healers. The system will go live in the OWL when Stage 4 kicks off next week, and it's currently being tested on the Overwatch public test realm. AJ, it's finally happening. It's finally happening. You don't look impressed. You don't think this is good for the league? Uh, really? Why? Maybe good for the league, I guess, because fundamentally at its core, this is a game about the mechanics of working together in a team. So locking in your team as 2-2-2 two, two, two yeah. makes sense in a certain way. But I, it's killing originality, diversity. It's right? killing spontaneity. The, the idea of like suddenly, no guys, we're losing. Let's just all go tanks. So suddenly it's like, wow, this True. is like it, it's by yeah, it's restrictive. And I don't think restricting things is ever the right way to solve a problem. Question from an Overwatch noob: Do yes. the characters or the heroes not fall into multiple categories? Like, is there only there can only well, be a tank? Or I can mean, you there's certain DPS characters tank. that you could say are sort of tanky, like May is kind of tanky. She's a support, right? No, May is a, a DPS, at least in the uh, category that she falls in. So and Brigitte is a support character, but she's a little tanky because of her shield and she's got a big health pool. Uh -huh. So there are some characters, you know, D.Va is a tank, but has lots of mobility. Uh, I guess she doesn't do a lot of damage. So, <laughs> so yeah, the thing that yeah bothers me is that you know as a support main, well I'm gonna have no problem queuing up for matches now because True. everyone always needs support mains. Um, but you Is know there are thing? instances where I'm in the match and I'm going, my DPS are terrible. I, I should oh. switch to one of these roles and and you, someone else play healer because you're just dying constantly. So right, right. But I believe between ability to maps up. you'll still be able to change character role. Yes, so, in the pro yeah. league. But if you're playing just like a standard oh. competitive match. Once you're queued as support, you're locked into that for the rest of the game. You can't yeah. make that swap and, and fix but problems. In the last meta, when it was all like tanks, didn't you hate it? Like, I know a lot of people were complaining, yeah, so this is their way of trying to fix that. We like action, guys. But we're just seeing goats going, you know, to the side. It was this three uh, three tanks, three support meta for the longest time, but in the last, mm. um, in the playoffs here at stage three, we we're starting to see a whole lot more of the DPS coming yeah. back in a big, big Naturally. way. Yeah, naturally, so it kind of phased itself out just before they implemented this to fix a problem that had basically fixed, its, fixed itself at yeah. this point. <laughs> Blizzard trying to control everything. We'll maybe, see how it goes. Maybe it'll be good. Well, keeping on the subject of roll lock in the OWL, the announcement had a curious statement hidden within. It seems that players must sit in designated spots on stage depending on their role, be it DPS, tank, or healer. This is to make it easier for the audience to know who plays what role, but if a player changes a hero in between matches, they will also have to swap seats to the corresponding chair. What do you think here, Lisa? Is swapping chairs to correspond with roles really all that important? Are fans really going to be confused? I think this is the stupidest thing uh, eSport <laughs> could have implemented. <laughs> and I mean, I'm not the only one. On Twitter, everyone was laughing about how now pros have to play musical chairs, as right. if times between games and stuff isn't long enough, that yeah. this, they're just adding another thing for players and teams to worry about. Um, I think it's a little silly. I yeah. think it's totally silly that you have to line up. But maybe this is to, you know, stop the complaints of how it's already such a hard spectator game yeah. that they want to make sure you cannot mix up who is playing well, maybe what. Maybe they will have the symbols of what the roles are, like the character icon in front of the player on the back yeah. of their monitor in some way, which I think, yeah, would probably help spectators in some respect. I mean, even I, as someone who watches a fair bit of Overwatch League, obviously, yeah. um, you know, I'm sometimes going like, well, I'm not sure that face to that name to that character on fair. the screen right now. It's, you are keeping track of three different things whereas you watch regular sports, you're just like, yeah, that player with that name on his back and his number. It's it's a lot less to, to have to worry about or think about. And also, you know, when you're watching an eSport, are you not just looking at the monitor mainly? Like, why does it matter where the player himself really sit? You're basically staring at a computer, like the screen. It's for the story, so, Lisa. Oh, my God. So you can get drawn in where your two tanks, they turn after, you know, successfully avoiding a, an earth shatter from Reinhardt and can look at one another in the eyes.
this. AJ, they're not giving the audience enough credit. Like every, everyone who's there watching, they love Overwatch. They know what a tank is. They know what a DPS is. It's like, can this you way, baby us anymore, Blizzard? You, you can see them side by side. So when the supports are running away because the rest of their team, you know, fell apart, they can just like. You know, really hold random. Hands and run into the distance. <laughs> Detail is that they put the support. I believe it's like tank support. Like D they didn't put the DPS and the support together. I believe that's what I remember reading. Correct me if I'm wrong. Oh. But I'm just like usually, you know, supports would sit next to your DPSs, right? Of course. Isn't that just? Well, yeah. I mean, your your you're supports you're supposed to be doing both. You got to be keeping your tanks alive. What? No. Isn't and the point of a tank is that they can sustain on their own for a long time? <laughs> yeah, but they're the ones taking the most damage, so they need the most support. Like your DPS kind of like you know peel off, do some damage, come right back, yeah. sort of thing. So. Keep them all alive. Interesting differences in different games. Yeah, it's whack-a-mole, right. but with health bars. <laughs> That's how I play. <laughs> Move on to the next story and to something completely different. ESL and AT&T upgraded their esports partnership this week. At certain events like IEM Chicago, AT&T customers will have access to exclusive seats, exclusive meet and greets with pros, early access to the arena, and a ton of other perks. If you're not an AT&T customer, tough luck. You get none of this. And in fact, if you're so, not an AT&T yeah. customer, they make you sit in specific seats next to, to, to non-AT&T customers <laughs> in a particular lineup. I'm just that's, that's not true. Trying Don't to tie it back to the Facts. Overwatch story. Um, do, you do you think offering these like exclusive perks will, first of all, encourage people to switch partner, like uh, I guess service partners? What do you call them? Yeah, service providers in service the states. Providers. I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, most people are either really unhappy with their service provider or like status. So I, I don't think the perks will be something that will cause people to like, oh, I'm going to get some esports. You have to be a very dedicated esports enthusiast yeah. to switch to AT&T, especially given their reputation in the States. They're the one who gets made fun of the most down Yikes. there. But that's why they're, I guess, offering these exclusive new yeah, perks. Yeah. Honestly, when I was reading the package, it was kind of intriguing as an esports fan. I was like, sure. oh, you get to see the arena first, you know, avoid the crowds. If you hate that, you get good seats. Yeah. That's pretty convincing. Your cell phone service will be <laughs> otherwise things are going to be You're not making great. calls in the audience that we shouldn't be, AJ, while you're watching the game. Yeah, Mom, the game's going great. I'm definitely not bothering anyone around Mom, me by Mom, reporting on it to you, Mom. 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 <laughs> Maybe. Exactly. Um, but however, I honestly think our generation is kind of like the laziest in terms of this kind of stuff. We just like, want, want it all. We want all the yes, things. Yes, and like the, the moment you make us work for something, we're like, screw you. I'm not going to change my service provider. Right. Like, you just give me the stuff for free. My patronage Otherwise, is enough. Exactly, exactly. Because, right. you know, we're given so many things for free. Twitch mm. is so accessible. Esports itself is so accessible. Especially when you work in the media. Oh. <laughs> I don't have any free stuff. What would you get? <laughs> Well, where's where's my offer, huh? Okay, wow. this is not, this is he's making a joke because yesterday on the ride home he literally didn't have service in well, the yeah, car. I, didn't. <laughs> I was like, why is my cell phone down? But... Someone hook him up, please. There you go. AJ needs some yes. service. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on to our last story, Apex Legends developer Respawn Entertainment is hard at work tackling hackers in-game, which would be awesome if you could actually see them being tackled. Their latest solution is unique, however. Known or detected cheaters, in addition to facing bans for repeated offenses, may now be matched exclusively with other cheaters, creating their own cheating battle royale, if you will. The solution is being worked on right now, but players are already asking for ways to watch these cheaters fight one another. Lisa, what do you think of this solution? Would you even want to watch an all cheaters match? Uh, to watch? Hell yeah. That really? would be so interesting because then you'll see crazy, ridiculous things happening all around. But they're all done by computers and by AI and by hacks and such. So they're not actually like skilled players impressing you with their abilities. They're just people sitting there going like, um, no, no, it's then it's a mix because then it, cheaters will have to try to out cheat others. So then they do have to be kind of creative with it. I suppose, right? but like no? when you are competing against a hacker, at least in PUBG, I don't know how I actually haven't experienced it that much in Apex Legends okay. personally. Um, but in PUBG, there would be moments of just like you're walking along, and then you're just dead. And then, uh, so like these matches would be just wherever people can like, as soon as they pick up a gun and can turn and can, you know, within the <laughs> rules of the game, have a bullet hit someone, that bullet right. is hitting someone. That's how bad these hacks are. Yeah. So it would just be kind of quickly dissolving into like, yep, people dying over there, people dying over there. You wouldn't see any like interesting confrontations or dances like you typically do. I don't even have to mute Lisa here. I can just continue. Yeah, no, he, he's right. You're, you're right. However, I think it's interesting that they're implementing a system like this because 
it kind of similar to do you know the theory about like um, incarceration when you put people who right. do crimes with other people who do crimes. It's just going to get worse. It gets worse, it's guys. It's going to lead to innovation exactly. in cheating and they hacking make friends. and such. They make friends and they right. do crimes together afterwards. And then what if you yeah. put all the cheaters in this game together? They'll just cheat. What algorithm are you using, man, for your hacks? They're pretty good. Oh, well, I'm <laughs> crossing exactly. the... Exactly. Yeah. Right? So mm. I don't know if this actually will solve the cheating problem. This almost seems... Okay, Apex Legends is trying to, they don't want to ban players that are cheating. They want to keep the user base, which is why they create another side game or whatever that cheaters right. can still play, but they still have the user base. Do your tests of your cheating over here yeah, against exactly. one another. And it won't affect their numbers, right? They can still say, yo, we have millions, even though half of them are cheaters. Well, when it's you know? a free game like that, and anytime that you get banned, you just roll a new account, sign up for a free email somewhere, sign up, you know. You don't okay. even have to uninstall the game, just log in on a different Sounds like you have a lot name. of experience with this. No, I don't. I just I don't like the systems. Like in Overwatch, oh, there isn't so a cheating problem because it's a game that costs money every time that you want to yes. you know add a new account to it. Whereas AJ. games like Fortnite and Apex. Have Legends. you been hurt before? By cheaters in game? Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't like it at all. All right, we'll see if the system works because it's time to move on to see what the streamers are doing in Clip It. Our first clip comes from Paladin Amber with this limited time offer. How much for foot play? I'll tell you how much. Hi, welcome into Paladin Ember Sales. That's right. Do you want to see foot play? I've got the solution for you. Now for just a small fee of $19.95 plus shipping and handling. I'm going to tell you to get, get your foot fetish out of my chat. Get it right out of my chat. I don't want anything to do. I want to take it away right now. Get out. Uh, out. Okay, back to you guys. You know what? You guys can come to our stream anytime for foot play. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm kidding. You like my slippers? They're pretty cute, aren't they? No, AJ, put those. You can't even stretch. No. You can't even reach up there. I got no there. flexibility in these hips whatsoever. It's okay. When you take foot pictures, you just have to angle down. Exactly. I'm not an expert at yeah. all. No. But that's a really good clip. You know what? I know female streamers all the time get requests for foot pictures. Right. I have experience with it. I know Marissa has had experience with it. Um, it's almost become like an old thing now. Like, it's not even funny anymore. Right. right? Pic feet pictures? I had Let's someone join my stream once and asked me to dance. And they were like, I'll give you a cheers and, and like bits for dancing. I was like, I'm not, I don't know. I don't. You guys, Can't. whoever asked him to ask for the wrong thing, you just ask him to take off a shirt, he'll well, do it. He has streamed so shirtless hot in my guys. office. Any, any excuse. All right, our next clip comes to us from Dingle Derper and Man's Best Friend. The freaking quote is not about that. I have a serious talk that needs to be had. I'm at exactly 300 points. If we lose this game, <laughs> I'm out of champions, dude. And I'm a freak out, dude. <laughs> It was a good boy who just wants to play ball. Oh, I think he just wanted a sip of wine. <laughs> that seemed more Was like... that wine? That's a big glass of wine. It looked Give like it was some. maybe like, I don't know, beet juice or something. It's standard. It was, beet juice? It looked like it was a big glass of something. Who drinks glasses of wine like that? Listen, I know you have to take care of your health. I know you have to take care of your health being so old, but beet juice? She's probably drinking wine. She's at home. She so can have mad. as much wine as she wants. Don't shame. I'm not trying to shame. I'm just, I don't, I've never seen anyone drinking wine out of a like giant cup like that. AJ, have you seen anyone drink wine out of the bottle? Yes. Well then. Difference, I suppose. There you go. Yeah, uh, I just love that it was something that dark and obviously staining as opposed to just a glass of water, which wouldn't have been as hilarious. AJ, stop, what? stop judging. All right, let's move on. It's truly the best time of the day when we troll through the Twitterverse to bring you all the things pros bless us from their timeline. This first post comes from esports host Smix, claiming all Asians can do this. Let's see. Okay, Smix is showing off her nimble finger, spinning this pen round and round and go. It doesn't stop. Look at that agility. How would you rank that, AJ? That's pretty impressive. <laughs> That's just like a two finger spin. I don't think I could do that. Um, could I feel that? bad because, you know, she's saying all Asians can do it, but okay. I've never been able... <laughs> that does not look as graceful. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. No. I, mean, no. I can do this one pretty well. Like, that one's not bad, but the, like... <laughs> it's not as graceful as hers. Maybe no, it's because no. hers wasn't slow-mo, though. Maybe. What the frick? But the, like... I think she had it on a string, to be honest. Too? Can we double-check that clip? It looked like there was a string on it. Know. All right, getting rid of that. Moving on. Overwatch caster Jamerson took to Twitter to share a new phenomenon plaguing the community. He said, <clears throat> Lindholm syndrome, a condition which causes forget players to develop a psychological alliance to break after countless hours of scrims. 
Hmm. This is not something I have experienced myself, but yeah. many pro players who are otherwise like DPS Explained players us. getting locked in. With, well, with this GOATS meta we were talking about earlier where Brig was uh, such a crucial part of it, so many players were forced to play Briguette, mm. and they are not particularly fond of this character. Why? Is she not fun to play? Well, I mean, people like DPS players. They want to go out there and shoot rockets or snipe people and like Genji uh. dive in there. But Brigitte was just so critical in GOATS that they became accustomed to playing her. And now that she's no longer so critical in these team comps, we're going to see less of her in pro play. But, you know, people are just reluctant now to let her go, having spent so much time. Let her go. Brigitte. Let her go. What's let with it? Go. Stockholm. You know yeah, when you become. That's yeah. the Lindholm syndrome. Who's Lindholm? That's Brigitte Lindholm. Oh, all right. Uh, it's time for our last profound thought. We're sending it to CSGO Pro Rush, who learned the hard way that there is such thing as too friendly. Sometimes when I'm walking down the street, I'll say hi to strangers and they look at me like I'm crazy. I guess it's just a Midwest thing. Sad face. Hmm. I don't know. I think it's a fairly Canadian thing. You don't say hi to people in our neighborhood sometimes or give them a little nod. I feel pressured to, but I don't want to. Mm. <laughs> mm, that's judgment. More judgment from AJ. Listen, okay, maybe it's a big city thing versus a smaller city thing. I think, yeah. I don't have in time Toronto, to say hi to everyone. Yeah, there's so many people that you're going to be passing. You're not right? going to be, like, super friendly. And it also does, like, as soon as you say hi to someone, it almost invites them to be like, hi, I want to tell you about blank whatever thing. My or, cat. like, stop you and yeah. have a conversation. And you're like, no, I, I just had time to acknowledge your presence. I didn't have time to engage with you. There's a difference. 100%. And you've got to be careful in those instances. 100%. I, yeah. My default is don't say hi to anyone. Ignore everyone unless they say hi to me. And then I do the polite thing. Right, but, right. So you're yeah. happy to say hi back, but. No, I'm not an initiator. Not an instigator. All right. Rush, you're weird. Well, let's say hi to some crowd control. Have you ever paused a game at a really bad time? Well, Bad 1080 did and discovered something rather unfortunate about our good friend Mario. No! What are you looking at there, bro? What's got you so fixated and fascinated? Oh, and Toad's just getting a full face <laughs> of Mario butt right there. Aww. And Luigi coming in last as always. That's why the order in which you, I guess, take off is important. You want to be yeah. behind Peach? But Maybe Peach should go last. I mean, it's usually oh, right. ladies that, first, yeah, but in this too. case, so that no one's getting an eyeful. She's got to be wearing shorts, right? She's got, like, you know, <laughs> frills under there and stuff, I'm sure. You know, though, I always knew Mario was a pervert. Really? You can tell, the stash and the, yeah. the plumbing and the, right. the so pervert. Right, fixated on pipes and jumping on people's heads. and All facts. Eating mushrooms. I'm not even surprised. <laughs> All right, next up, we've heard all the takes on Gamer Bathwater, sorry, Gamer Girl Bathwater, and almost all the jokes. The Grey's Inn made a comic featuring Bathwater. This is the real Gamer <laughs> Bathwater everyone wants. Wow! Wow! Look how satisfied Waluigi is with himself. Hmm. Bathwater. Lisa, what do you think that bathwater would taste like? Ew, taste? No one's drinking it, AJ. Well, that, isn't that why people are buying the bath water from Gamer Girls? What else would you be buying it for? What? I thought that was the whole thing, that weirdos want to drink the bath water of Gamer Girls. I what else never do you do even with... assumed that that's what people were drinking. They're soaping it. Are they going to bathe hopefully. in it as well? I don't know. Maybe they just want to have it. I mean, dip their finger in it. I mean, I, I have some other more imaginative ideas of what you could be doing with this bath water, DM but I dare not one. say them here in front of people publicly. I am so disturbed. I never even thought that people were drinking this water. What else did Guys, you think they were doing with it? Who was in the wrong just here? That admiring it? <laughs> yes. Yes, you know, on your shelf right. of collectibles. Well, let's wash that image out of all of our minds <laughs> with an oldie and a goodie. It's new to me, so I present Nakuza Cause Lego GTA. <laughs> That's from Nukazuka, as I botched before you the botched video. Me. You can catch more of it on his YouTube page. 
That must have taken a long time to make, but that's totally GTA right there. It took so long to make and a second to destroy. That yeah. was so disturbing at the end there. I was like, yeah, I'm for this game until he smashed the Lego in pieces. But that's GTA. I don't play GTA. Uh, oh, I actually tried. I tried Chinatown because Marissa right. made me play it, uh, and I did not enjoy it. Okay. No, it's too hard. It's not for everyone. It's very violent. It sure is. It'd be <laughs> weird to see if Lego ever did team up with Rockstar because, you know, Lego does so much with Warner Brothers properties. Would that ever happen? I'd probably not. I would play it. Too graphic, but you know. This is the version I would play. If for it was sure. GCA in Lego. That's right. You got Lisa Dewan's stamp, stamp of approval. That's right, guys. Let us know if you would play the game. But that's it for Unmuted. Remember, you can always hit us up on all our socials at Squad State just to say hi or send us stuff to react to. We'll see you next time.